Hi everybody. I'm gonna do some string exercises. No, string practices, something. Um, string techniques. Let's go with that. And so I actually found this canvas board. Canvas panel, 12 inch by 24 inch. And so I thought this was a great size in width to do a bunch of string techniques that actually give you different results. So <laughs> let's get to it. I'm going to use my spring house paint with Floetrol pre-mixed in this container. And I'm going to use some creative paints and a Montmartre. So I have the Montmartre Yellow Orange. That's with Floetrol. They're all with Floetrol. Uh, creative Place Purple Lake. And a little bit of the Creative Place Cobalt Blue. And possibly... Creative Place Emerald Green. So that was a very last minute decision, but there you go. That happens sometimes. So just pour on my white. I'm not used to a canvas uh, panel, canvas panel, anything of this length. So it's a little bit different for me. I don't know how long it's actually been sitting around the house, but it was still in its plastic wrap, so that was great. And because it is so much larger, I do have to have the camera up higher. So I will do my best to keep checking on on focus and everything I just have to prop myself up on my tippy toes while I do that so. now I'm also going to add silicon but I'm not going to add it to all of them and we're almost done. Let's. It's not. Although it's just something I want to. This idea has been something that I've been wanting to put together, and check out as well as you know use. I do think it could look very pretty, so I do possibly want to make sure that if I want to keep it as a picture like for the wall of the studio or something like that it's all covered okay and find it okay so I now have my Wet rag, okay. So, first things first, orange. So, the Montmartre yellow orange. What I also have is, this is a black tray that you get from the freezer section that has, um, I don't know, pre-packaged frozen stuff in it. But it's the outer casing, so I kept it. And I flipped it up upside down and made like a valley in the back here. So I can pour the paint on there 
and then put the string through it. It's been suggested to use a plate. Previously, I've just always dipped it back into the little pots and my string is dry. I'm using wool. I believe it's eight ply wool. And there we go. So that's what I'm using to put my paints on to dip the string into. Move it along. Maybe after it's initially started, it would be less effort to dip it back in. I don't know. Okay. So, this one is entirely coated. And it's going here. And this is where I'm just going to pull all of it. To the center. Now you can see that the, my middle section is white from where I dragged through the white paint. So I'm going to grab that. And then I have a whole nother orange little section. And I can use that to then put back down and pull again. And let me see what I do to clear it off. I just put my fingers together and drag it through my fingers. So all that excess paint and a relatively paint free string. Okay, so another one that I like to do is dripping off my hand. <laughs> okay, so this one is the little hook. Oh, okay. Down. And this one you try and maintain that you're pulling it off at this point. So I like to use a finger like either side. Pull it down. Oh, that's pretty. This here. Beautiful. Whereas now this one, that's not so pretty. So just because the idea is to use the techniques and see how they go, I'm going to put this one back down. I haven't re-dipped it after doing this one. But I am going to put it down just inside the line of the orange and I'm going to pull it again down into one point at the bottom. Let's see, so I just put my fingers together, pinch it and pull it through. And there's the excess orange. And I can reuse that string without too much dripping off. Okay, where am I up to? Make sure this is clean. Okay, so now I want to try and add in some of the purple lake.
So this one I'm going to put in right next to the orange. But what I'm going to show you, I'm going to use a fresh string. And oh, right there. Okay. Never mind. <clears throat> Scoop up some of the orange so that it's one at majority at one end. And place the string without dropping it in the painting into the orange at the tip and then down through the purple. So I want to make sure that's all wet with paint, soak up the paint and then into the purple. Talk about just varying some colours. See how that goes. Slide this up a little and get some more String into the purple. Oops, got some orange. That's okay. So all this is purple and that very tip bit is orange. Okay, how's our focus? Whew. Okay, walk it off. And up. Now this one is going to be at the end here. Oh, talk about flying around. I'm going to place that down and then go a little bit to the side, a little bit to the side, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then down. As you can see, I'm not leaving this there. I'm not letting that go. So we're just going to... I can tell that it's definitely set in there. Start pulling and keep that in a straight space at the bottom. I'm aiming for that orange tip to come down. Oh, there you have it. So I'm actually not going to wipe this one off. I'm going to dip the purple section back in the purple and the top back in the orange. Pull that back out. So it looks like this again. Let's see. And I'm going to go over here and we're going to curl. Whoops. Curl. Curl. Okay. So we don't need to leave that there long. So let's give it a pull slowly again down to a center point. And then try and focus on keeping that. Oh, very nice with that orange tip. And if you don't want to drag the orange all the way down, slowly, oops, <laughs> don't trip it. Uh, lift it, raise it up from the canvas instead of dragging down, raise it up. So that looks beautiful. Very similar results. This one a, a wave, this one a circular motion. All right, so da -da -da, we're still going. And I know that there's people that don't like all the talk and don't like everything, but the, hey guys, fast forward, watch it faster. Um, you know, just enjoy watching the string pulls, whatever it is for you. But. Okay, so now I want to add in 
a little bit of blue because there is only a tiny bit left, but I'm going to add silicon to that. So just one drop because there's only a tiny amount in there. Do a little bit of a stir. Think tiny, teeny, tiny amount. So I'm going to spread that. Sort of between the orange and the purple. And then the green. I don't want to put silicon into the actual pot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this blue pot, add some green to that. Because I like the option of using no silicon or some silicon. A little bit more of this, so there's two drops of silicon. Bit of a stir. Mostly also to blend in the last remnants of the blue with the green. And then also pour that onto my container. So now it looks like that. So right back to the beginning, one of my first things to trial was dipping the string into the paints. This is going to get messy, this is going to be colour mixing. <laughs> oh good. Need a clean for orange. And green. Use my thumb. Purple was my finger. So just for a bit of variation, we tried a dirty cup a long time ago, but did muddy really quickly. So perhaps using this type of plate slash tray style, you can vary your colours without it getting too muddy. So what we are looking at is picking up the string. Oops, sorry. And putting it down. Now remember there's some silicon in that. And I haven't torched any of any of this. I didn't even torch the white. And I haven't torched any of the string pulls as yet. So, and so now we're just going to pick it up. Like we're not dragging it, we're not pulling it, we're just going to pick it up. So, and whoop, put it down again. Now because we've got double ups, it's like overlapping and everything and it's not completely in the white paint, it doesn't matter. Absolutely does not matter. I'm going to torch this one afterwards because it does have the silicon, but I'm already going to pick that up. And put it back into the paint to absorb some fresh colours. And we'll give that a quick torch. I cannot, I have this large torch at the moment. It's like a tradey torch. So. go look at that that's absolutely stunning the variety of colors the variety of cells that it's picked up and released and that one's a bit they're a bit blur now I don't know what happened with them but I'm gonna play first let's finish this next one so we've got the string back on the tray 
getting some more colours back on. And the blue. Back into it. So, this was one that I kind of just went like that. But when I pulled it off, I pulled it off from the top, if I can get that now. <laughs> and so I pulled that that way, came over swap sides, went that way. Kind of raise it up, flip it over, drag, raise it up, flip it over, drag, flip over, drag. And I think we'll just finish that there. So that gives another different effect. And because I'm not a big fan of that chunk of orange at the top, I'm going to go over it. <laughs> so pull it, raise it up, swap sides. Pull it, raise it up, swap sides. Oh. There we go. So that looks pretty awesome. And pop that there. So I'm going to torch this one too. I can already see that there's big cell popping there and some tiny little ones here. Wow. <laughs> that is great. I love it. And this is what my tray looks like. So, nice, happy little mess. And so, oh, okay, we're going to play. Let's quickly play because I don't know how long this is going to be. Let's see. Let's go. Like I said, if you don't like long videos or you don't like the chit chat, fast forward. I know that some people like to watch the entire process. So I'm going to go back over this one with the multicolours. And I, <laughs> I changed how I was pulling that halfway through. You can pull. That's okay. You can do that too. Freedom of the creator. Okay, looks like we might be starting to get a little muddy. Line that up. It's a little loop. And pull it down. Other things you can do if you just see the opportunity there's a blank there's a whole section there that still doesn't have white on it I'm gonna pop that down really wide and bring it in there we go and as you can see we are starting to get a little bit muddy that's okay that's okay a little bit of green here too so I'm going to do another one. No, not quite enough. That's okay. Wipe that bit off. Dunk it back through the green and the purple and the blue. Little one, wide one here. Now I'm just using up paints because I'd hate to see them go to waste. They have got muddy, so it's not like I can scrape them back up and put them. There you go, that one's like a feather. And I think, oh, let's just break this up. If 
But there you go. All right, that's something I've been waiting to do for a little while. Oh, sorry, that was a bit croaky, wasn't it? And yeah, so let's give it a torch because those extra bits have silicon. Are different. Um, this was a zigzaggy, this one was the small hook and pulled by the long string. This one here was the small hook pulled by the short string. Uh, this one here was where I would just let it land wherever and then pick it directly up. This one was the pull to the right, pull to the left. This one was the big loop with extras over the top and this one was the circles coming down there we go one more because I know there's silicon in there which excites me now and I know where I'm going to put it not exactly oh, let's see if we can make it pretty we are a bit muddy Okay. One straight line. Pick it directly up. Another straight line. And just for fun, one there as well. Here we have it. <laughs> this is my tray. Check that out. Yeah. Okay, another quick torch. You can already see, even without the silicon, the lines have a great effect. And I don't know if you can see how well you can see that. So I'm not going to torch this one, but I will torch this. So there we go. Okay, I'm going to bring you down and give you a closer look. And here we have it. So there is your straight line. Let me just talk about this one first. And how it does have a really nice effect without torching, without utilising the silicon and the heat so and if I come straight over to the other lines that I did torch you can see how the silicon swells out those lines oh that is pretty And we go up. So there we have it. I know I already ran through it. So I've got a closer look for you. I have to say thank you so much to all my subscribers, my viewers. And I love your comments and your sharing of inspiration that you know, you've been looking for something and now you're going to try this. Whatever it is that I'm sharing with you on the day. Look how far those cells are coming out. That's amazing. And that. Woo! Yeah, so I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. You are what keeps this channel going. And... I have so much gratitude for you. So there you have it, a bunch of different string dip techniques. And so this is what it looks like dry. 
So this was the snake-like string, the small hook, that one. This was the dip and drop. So put it down and then pick it straight up, no dragging. This was the like wave and then pull, lift, no, drag, lift, drag, lift, drag, lift. I really love that effect. So that's nice. This one was one big, huge loop, which looked a bit flat in this one, so I just did some more over it. And this one was the, like, going down in the loops. And then I started playing, doing some extras. These were the lines. And these ones I torched. Whereas over here, here's another line that had silicon, but I chose not to torch it to see the difference. So, yeah, so there's the final piece. Um, can you notice the sides? Can you see that it's warped? It's lifting off the table at both ends. So this will be something that I will uh, work out how to flatten out, whether I tip it upside down and weight it for a while um, or just see how it goes. So because this was just an experiment, an example of the kind of results you can get from the different string dip techniques. And I hope you enjoyed watching that. I had a lot of fun with it. So there we have it. All right, guys. Be fabulous. <laughs> okay. Bye.